Palm Sunday is also known as Passion Sunday. And the word passion in English actually comes from the Latin verb patior, passus, which means to suffer. So in a very real way today, we could call this Suffering Sunday. And we know it's a reality of all of our lives that we all suffer if we're a human being walking on the face of the earth. Suffering will always be a part of our lives. And it's just a reality that we can't escape. We wish it could be otherwise, but even Jesus, the Son of God, comes into the world and he too suffers. So I wanted to share with you a definition of suffering that I learned many years ago and I found extremely helpful. And it's one I've always become kind of memorized and etched in my head and in my heart. And I hope you'll do the same today. And it's very simple. It says suffering is having what you do not want or wanting what you do not have. And I think the first part of the definition is pretty simple for us to grasp. For example, one of the sweetest, kindest, most wonderful people I've known in my life, she's been my assistant for 20 years, she's our director of communications here, and sadly, she has a recurrence of cancer right now. She doesn't want to have that tumor inside of her, and therefore, she, and all of us who know her and love her, suffer with her. And so it's pretty clear when some of the sufferings that we bear are really evident. But sometimes, like the second part of the definition explains, sometimes it's not so much. But I know from my own personal experience, it's just as real, if not even more painful, when we want to have something that we do not have. And I say it's more hidden because no one sees what you don't have. And therefore, you don't get as much empathy or sympathy or support. But we know it's very, very real. And I hope this definition will help you. I know it's helped me so much throughout my life. And so what I want to do in the middle part of this homily is to think of suffering in two different ways. And the first one is what to do when we suffer, and then secondarily, what to do when others suffer. And when we suffer, it's really a very painful moment, as we all know. I've been on the operating table. I'm sure you've had your crosses and difficult, really hard moments. And it's moments like that where perhaps we can feel like we're abandoned by God. But actually, they're very grace-filled moments. And they're moments in which we can actually unite ourselves more closely to God. And we can be like Jesus on the cross, giving redemptive value to our suffering. It's moments like that where we really offer ourselves. And it's like what we were taught in the seminary, that part of Mass where we offer up the bread or offer up the wine. We're always taught to put on the altar not only the bread and the wine, to put our trials, put our tribulations, put our difficulties, put our suffering so we can be more united to Jesus. Or as the nuns used to teach us when they would say, offer it up, right? Offer up your pain to our Lord. And then in the second part, what to do when others suffer. And I think that's where today's gospel gives us a really powerful example. Jesus is suffering all throughout the gospel, but he's not the only person in the scene. There's a lot of other people around, and there are some people that are there that are actually exacerbating the suffering of Jesus. He's down on the ground, and they're spitting on him, right? And they're lashing him like their soldiers are doing it. And they're exacerbating the suffering of another person. May we never exacerbate the suffering of another human being. What we're called to do is what we see Simon of Cyrene and what we see the holy women of Jerusalem doing, where we try to, in whatever way we can, to alleviate the suffering of another human being. And we look for ways to do that just like what we're doing now, right? As a whole world, we're all suffering with our brothers and our sisters in the Ukraine. 
and we try to do whatever we can. If I can send money, send clothing, send prayers, right? We're all trying to do it. That's what a Christian is called to do. But we find in today's gospel, besides those who alleviated and those who exacerbated, there were a lot who did nothing. So I want to end my homily with one word, a powerful word. May this be the word for this week, and I would say may this be the word for our entire lives. One word, compassion. What compassion literally means, calm is with, passion means suffering. It means I suffer with another human being. And so this week during Holy Week may be a moment for us, whatever crosses we're carrying, whatever sufferings we're bearing, to unite ourselves more intimately to Jesus and his passion. And let us also ask our Lord to give us all the grace to be those compassionate Christians that this world so desperately needs that I don't look at the suffering of any human being and pretend it's not there, but that I creatively, intelligently, lovingly, desperately look for a way to alleviate the sufferings of others. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit.